Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and I'd like to show you Air Windows Desk. This is a fairly early plugin. I did this while I was still figuring out things like console. So Desk is in the arena of, say, channel. And we can hear those things like this. Here's no plugins. If you turn on channel, you get this. Apparently a boost, that's interesting. And if you turn on desk, you get this. But here's what we're going to do. You see, these are subtle plugins. They're designed to not trash the sound. Because if you run into analog gear that's properly designed, especially if it's like a recording console, it's not going to act like a distortion box. You know, running through channels of mixers and things like that, especially nice ones, aren't going to be like a Proco Rat. So what we're going to do is force it to be nasty. Here's bit shift gain. Bear in mind, bit shift is 6 dB per bit. So that's 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. 30 dB gain into desk and or channel. And then it's 24 dB gain down so that it doesn't hurt us when we listen to things distorting. And it sounds a little bit like this. But if we turn channel on now, that's some distortion. We can do even more like that. So you might ask, so that's channel. Desk is the one that you used to sell when channel was free. So what makes desk such hot shit compared to channel that it used to be worth $50 to people? Mind you, it's, it's old with trans and tube desk as well, but here, let's show you. This is channel. Here's desk. Desk uses a variety of other uh, algorithms and functions. It was the first one designed to do that sort of channel type thing of a variety of colorations and things. It's not simply a slew clipper. It's got a, it's a sort of slew saturator. It's not simply just a... Uh, I don't remember whether it has that much going on in saturation or not. The point being, it's got a different way of handling slew saturation. It's got power sag built into it. I know that trans desk and tube desk make much more out of power sag. And desk is supposed to be the clean one. So when you slam it, you get this kind of result. 30 dB gain. And it starts to break up. Whereas 30 dB gain into channel 4, a little more like a stomp box, a little more crunchy. So what we can do now is back it off a little bit. Let's take it to 3 dB down. So here's what we got. Again, we can put channel 4 on. And that's got much the same result that we had before. It's more of a stompboxy kind of thing. But then this is dry. And here's test. Hear how it's sort of densing up things a little bit? It's not quite able to handle this intensity of sound. So it thickens. It thickens itself. And gets some more solidness going on. And this is 18 dB up. We can still hear how it's getting denser, it's getting thicker and fuller. Arguably too much. I mean, 
the idea here. The idea here was that it would work in such a way that you could run almost anything through it and not get an obvious grindy distorty result out of it. It's a conditioner. So what we're going to do is pull it back even more. Maybe to just one. And now if we have channel, it sounds very similar to what it already sounded like. Channel was the one that um, comes across a little bit more like a stomp box. It doesn't have quite the organicness, the size of a proper, you know, console circuitry emulation going on. But then when we cut desk in and out at this amplitude, and this is just 6 dB over zero. So we're, we're slamming it. We're slamming it more than it necessarily needs to be slammed, but that's not so unusual. You could put something like desk early on the mix bus and mix hot into it and then go from that into a peak limiter or a clipper or something like that. Peak limiter would be very suitable because it would preserve some of the saturation and thickening of desk, but then cut back the distortion qualities. What we've got here is this. Off. Very similar. But, rough. That's act this is actually a music composition that was done on a phone. So this is raw audio that is the essence of DAW. This is the essence of digital summing and digital combining. It happens to go good and loud, but there's no conditioning of any kind. And you listen to it and it's kind of unnatural, kind of rigid. And then we cut in desk. Again, that is 1 dB too much. So now that we've familiarized ourselves with how this sounds, we can turn everything off and go to just our digital synthesized thing and then cut in desk and see if you can hear what it does at the designed gain level not being slammed to the point where it's gratuitously distorting and, and thickening up and stuff, which is something that you can do. I was just doing it with bit shift gain. Bit shift gain is the cleanest way you could possibly do anything like that. But this is the original desk that was designed to be plunked into your mix just to have a subtle analogizing effect. And I would put this up against anybody's analogizing effects. However expensive, however big the monthly fee, Check this out. Raw with death. So this is what death sounds like. That's a pretty darn good one plug-in, no controls, just plunk it down and sound a little bit more analog, a little bit more coming out of a physical device rather than digital abstract mathematics land. And it's got a nice warm organic quality to it.
And yeah, you can slam it really hard to force it to break up and be obnoxious. And maybe that's even kind of cool. If got the bit shift gains, knock yourself out. But Desk was designed to do the kind of thing that's become very popular. Provide a analog mojo kind of vibe that doesn't get in the way of or destroy everything in the mix. Yet, it still brings something to the mix. It is the purest of all three plugins of this era, Desk, Trans Desk, or Tube Desk. And it's a very good choice for anywhere you want to stick something in there just to have it feel a little bit more analogy. Like if you're doing a full console mix, because it will work with console, what you can do is have your console channel plugins and then the console bus plugin on the bus. And if you've got like ouses or something like that, you might want to throw a version of desk on the aux without doing anything crazy with the gain or anything like that, just to have that slight conditioning quality. Because one of the things that's good about Desk is the fact that it's not over-processing. It does the more sophisticated slew saturation thing going on. It does some distortion. It does all of that stuff. But it's really not wrecking the sound. It's just bringing a little bit more roundness, a little bit more your, your analog limitations to what would otherwise be a very abstract, mathematical-sounding mix. I hope you like Desk. If you ever feel the need to do things like that, I think that this is a great choice. Just grab it and stick it on your... I mean, you can put lots of copies of Desk. I think I'll just take a moment and do exactly that. Let's have some fun. Boop, boop. Now, when I said lots of copies of desk, what did I mean? I meant something like this. Option drag causes it to copy itself. There are no controls, so I can do this all I want. So here's eight desks. <laughs> I started a little bit there, sorry about that. In fact, it's... Desk is giving us a little bit more fullness and boost, so the levels aren't quite what I expected they were going to be. But here we have Desk, eight times over. And as you can see, it's not wrecking the sound. I think you'd find there's a lot of plugins where if you put eight instances of them in, um, in a row, you'll really start dragging out the limitations and flaws of those plugins, and they're going to start sounding very overprocessed and unnatural. You're going to end up with nothing. But with Desk, we can even beat it up. And now that we're having this fun with it, let's start this. Let's just start switching them off one at a time and listen to how it cleans up. Bass is coming through again. too many buses here, so let's make them go back the way again. Air Windows Desk. It's free now. AU Mac and PC VST. If you like this kind of thing, support my Patreon. Thank you.